All right, welcome in hockey fans to Desert Southwest, another Sunday special. Randy X will be, it seems like I try to get down here as often as I can for Sunday specials because you always have a big event. The pandemic went on. We saw you guys doing curbside. We saw you doing online orders. The goalie day is here. You couldn't be on the ice with the goalies like I know you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. Tell me what it's been like uh, just being able to have the guys back around here and the, and the, the crowd that you had this morning to open. Uh, it's great. I, the, probably the biggest thing I missed during this whole thing was my employees, my hourly employees that I didn't see for uh, a couple of months and stuff. So my full-time employees, we did inventory and clean the stores and organize stuff and tried to keep busy. But my part-time employees, they're the ones I missed and they came back and it was fun. And um, obviously we had to cancel this event and reschedule it. Um, we missed the demo ice uh, portion of this. Um, so we weren't really sure how it was going to be the response and it was fantastic. We were packed with goalies and everybody came in. So, you know, these days, you know, it's certainly changed your perspective. You just have to be happy with everything, you know? Yeah, right. So I, it's great to see the customers and everybody happy and, and people walking out with stuff. So it's a great day. Okay. So we look back, uh, March 11th, 12th, when things started to shut down, what went through your heads the first week or so of things that were rolling the way they were it was hard and being in retail and we'd had some new product coming in and it's just trying to figure out what what to do and what made sense and the truths and the not truths and making sure everybody was safe and and stuff so when we were you know when the the governor you know forced that you know businesses to close down we tried to you know do some curbside and some delivery of stuff and maybe thinking outside the box um on that and you know it was it was tough i mean it was tough and we were trying to figure out so luckily things opened and we got a chance to redo our stores and clean them and organize them and um try and make them better than ever speaking of new things we're standing in front of the sprinter has got a new wrap on it tell me about the new wrap yeah we just got that back yesterday so it's kind of a, a bright <laughs> fire engine red or whatever it is but um you know the other wrap we had had for a couple of years and got faded so we just got that back last night and uh We'll be driving it around the state hopefully soon. Okay, you heard it first. The uh, behind the mask uh, sprinter is going to be out on the road, but hockey's starting to come back. You as a former player, how difficult is that for hockey players? You got your nephews, we all know. Uh, Kyle Capabianco has uh, been working out, I know, trying to get back in shape. But how difficult is it for a professional athlete to come back after this kind of a layoff in midseason? those guys they're in good shape and they've always been in shape and they work out hard and I, I think it'll take them a, a couple of weeks but those they're good athletes and and they've all been working out or doing stuff so once they get their skating legs under them I think it'll be fine um, so I think the NHL is doing the right thing with the protocol and the timeline and a few weeks of skating and they'll be ready to go and certainly some of the players that were injured or that it's given them some time yeah. to heal and um, well, the great thing now with having the, the certain venues is there's not going to be any home ice advantage and yeah. it's just who comes out of this the best and I can't wait to, to watch a lot of hockey you know all day I guess they'll probably be playing a few games a day at yeah. different times so I can't wait for hockey to start again I'm sure the players are excited we've had a few of the coyotes that came in during this and got some inline skates to <laughs> to do that and we, yeah. we we made some ice skates and inline skates for a few of the guys so it's good okay so as a player and a fan how difficult is it going to be to watch games without fans I don't think for me it won't be yeah. but I'm interested to see how they can get it if they can somehow through television get the rink and the players without the crowd yeah. if they show the crowd and there's nobody there it's going to be different but if they can just get the ice shots and like some of the sports I heard the soccer has been doing a good job over yeah. in yep. Europe of kind of taking the fans out of it um, so I, I think that through TV and technology, they'll be able to make it look good. And I think it'll, it'll be great to see, see the players back. I agree 100%. We're here, though, to talk goalie pads. So tell us what's new and uh, what's impressed you so far in, in the goalie line that you've seen come through. It's all, there's, every company has new stuff, and, and I kind of just oversee it. And we have our goalie <laughs> specialists and that to do that stuff. So some of this stuff has kind of passed me by, and I'm just, uh, <laughs> I just have the right people around me to, to, uh, to know the, the specs. And we have a, a good group of goalie guys here that work for us. But there's a lot of new stuff and a lot of high-tech stuff, and a lot of stuff's expensive, and some stuff's 
pretty price affordable, but there's uh, everything's new. Have you seen light pads ever this light before? Um, not this light and this good, not the break in time and, and that, and it's, it's, it's a good time. And then, you know, there's, there's a lot of goalies in here getting custom stuff and demo stuff and sale stuff. So it's kind of a hodgepodge. So when people watch this Sunday night, they're going to know it's over with, but they can still get some stuff and I'm sure you're going to still have some deals going on. So how do they get a hold of behind the mask if, uh, if they're not from the area? Um, we can, they can get a hold of us at behindthemask.com or they can just call our Scottsdale store. In fact, a quick uh, tidbit story is we had a, a, a mom and her son drive from Bakersfield, California, oh. just for this. Wow. So they said it was an eight-hour drive. They thanked us for holding us. They got some stuff. We're heading back, and I thanked them. I said, yeah. that's pretty impressive. So, and, and we see goalies are dedicated, and hockey players are dedicated, and goalies, so people didn't uh, use these times or any excuses. I think a lot of people wanted to get out of the house, and they look forward to coming here, and we look forward to seeing them. You know, when they said behind the mask, I didn't think they meant behind this mask. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> Randy These Exeby, are the times. <laughs> Randy Exeby, thanks for your time. Thank you. As uh, always. always great to be out. Always got to be on the sunshine in the middle of the summer, and I can't wait till you got the goalie camp rolling and, uh, and things happen again back on the ice, too. You got it. Thank you for coming out again. Appreciate it. I want to welcome in hockey fans in the desert southwest. It's uh, about 100 degrees. We're, we're out here at Behind the Mask for another Behind the Mask goalie day. So if you're going to talk goalies, let's bring in the goalie in my book, the, uh, the ACHA leader in goaltending, Anthony Shero is with me. Anthony, first of all, tell me what it's been like for you not to be able to go to a national tournament, but yet things roll on, as you told me. Um, yeah, it was definitely disappointing. Um, I mean, we're going in as an eight seed, I believe, which is a pretty – good spot to be in um I, mean, I thought we had a team that could make a run we were starting to click towards the end of the year and it, i mean that's the biggest thing is clicking at the right time and then getting it canceled and it obviously is devastating especially for the seniors i mean we had i mean, i think six seven seniors so i mean they didn't get to do their do the their last games and um play their last competitive hockey game so it, it really just sucked because playing with them for the last three years um, and then seeing it end that way for him really sucked. Well, you've been here behind the mask for a number of years. You've seen the goalie days one after another. You're working today, so I still you here for a couple of minutes. But um, goalie pads, they change all the time, right? What are you seeing so far this year? And are you going to make some changes to your set before the season starts? Um, I'm not changing it. I got my pads last year and <laughs> can't afford to get new ones. So I'm going to keep the ones I got. But, I mean, they're just it's crazy all the technology they have in behind them. Um, I mean, it's just the tweaks that they make from the last year's model, this year's model, make them, I mean, this brand new thing and make them lighter and make them all this other stuff. I mean, it's crazy what they put in behind them, but I'm sticking with what I got and <laughs> play with them another year. No matter what the goalie pads are, the main thing is stopping the puck, right? You've had a really good career so far at the U of A. What's been your key to success personally? Um, just take it by, day by day, save by save. I mean, not thinking big picture, just uh, just day by day. I mean, practice, practicing the way I play. I mean, practicing hard, making sure I do the right things in practice to make sure they follow in games. And um, I mean, I've had a good team the last three years. And, I mean, they've helped me out a lot. So I mean, a lot of credit goes to them. But uh, it's just keeping it simple and I mean, practicing as hard as I will play in the games. You know, the Wildcats, as you mentioned, were coming in. Um, back-to-back -back conference championships, back-to-back -back Cactus Cups. You guys had a lot of things to celebrate. It was going to be a big trip to, to Dallas. And just tell us how you guys got through that first couple of weeks. The first couple of weeks, like after? Y yeah, afterwards. Um, we just try to be together as much as we can. I mean, because a lot of guys uh, went home because school went strictly online. So a lot of guys thought save money and we'll just go home and finish the semester online. So the first week or so, we just tried to get together as much as we could. Um, cause sometimes, I mean, some of the guys, it's going the last time we see them. So, uh, it was just trying to get together no matter what it was, if it was just going to hang out, going to the guy's house or whatever it was, um, just trying to get together just to 
get in those last few moments as a team. You know, I talked to Coach Berman uh, during the summer, and I said, it looks like you're in an arms race with UNLV and ASU and Grand Canyon as far as stocking up players. How happy are you with that roster that's coming back and the new guys that are joining it? Yeah, um, we got a lot of guys coming back. I mean, when Bailey Marsh is coming back for a fifth year, too, which is huge. Um, and, I mean, obviously we have Koo still. Um, but, I mean, the guys coming back, um, they all play a huge role. And then we have a bunch of new guys coming in that, I mean, hopefully they step in into the rules that the – I mean, at least fill some of the holes that we have that the seniors left. Um, and hopefully they come in and, I mean, do their job. And, I mean, we'll click like we did last year. I mean, hopefully they're – I mean, Berman doesn't recruit kids that aren't good kids. So, I mean, that's a big role too. I mean, coming in and being a good kid and making sure that there's no um, – I mean, we call them cancers, which just kind of ruin teams. So, yeah. um, I think we'll be – I mean, all the guys coming back, good kids. I mean, we all get along. And there's nothing wrong there. And then the new guys come in, and I think we'll be good. Okay, two final ones for you. You, uh, you obviously have not been able to get any ice time. So as a goaltender, how do you prepare that ice time? It's a little different for you, A, because I know what you guys go through at the start of the season every year and yeah. with the gem show. But how do you keep yourself sharp when you can't be on the ice? Uh, um, just trying to work out as much as I can. I mean, yeah. that's really all I can do. There's nothing. There's no ice, like you said. Um, I'm in Tucson, too, so I'm, there's no ice <laughs> at all. The TCC is not even open, so they can't even get into the rink. Um, so, I mean, it's just working out and just trying to stay in shape during the summertime. And then, I mean, I'll start coming up here when there is ice, um, just a couple, a day or so a week, just so I can get on the ice and get something. Um, but other than that, just working out at home and trying to stay in shape. You've seen the growth of hockey in the desert Southwest. You've seen the ACHA grow. Now you've got three new teams joining the conference. Um, makes playing for something a little more fun. And just your thoughts on how good things have gotten here in the desert Southwest over the past five years. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I mean, a lot of people didn't care about hockey, I mean, five years ago. I mean, I don't think they knew about it. I don't, I don't think they didn't care. I just think they didn't know about it. Um, and then ASU getting the NCAA team definitely helps grow it. And then, like you said, I mean, uh, GCU coming in D1, and, I mean, they're taking off. It's definitely not – I mean, they're doing really well. Um, and then ASU's ACHA, they have – AC D1, D2, D3, and a women's team. So, I mean, it's definitely growing, and it's, I mean, and you love to see it because, I mean, like I said, five years ago, it wasn't it wasn't like this. And then now you see all these teams, and, um, I mean, it definitely, it's, it's awesome. I don't know what else to say. It's really awesome. You got it covered. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony Sherrill, thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, have a good summer. Let's hope you get back on the ice sooner rather than later. Thank you. All right, welcome back in. Sunday special here at Ice Time Hockey Southwest. We're up behind the mask. It's goalie day. Yep. It's, uh, let's see, June. It's uh, 95 degrees right now. Right. We can take that in the desert southwest. Yep. i got Kevin Wu with me from Warrior Hockey. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Kevin, tell me just a little bit about what it's like to uh, to come back here to behind the mask, especially after what we've all been going through with the pandemic. Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, I think Randy and the boys have done a great job, you know, giving back to the community with hockey and keeping everybody's spirits up, you know. The tough times to I think last time I was here was Smash Fest, so <laughs> right. probably a lot of people's last memory of coming into the yeah. store and playing hockey, right? So exactly, uh, definitely good to be back and good to see everybody coming out too. Would you have ever have imagined that this was going to take the United States of America the way it has? Uh, definitely not. Um, I don't think anybody could have imagined it. You know, yeah. just the way it, the way it went down. But uh, you know, maybe it was nice to take a break for a little bit. Well, the hockey season's starting back up again. The NHL has a plan to get started. The yep. rinks are starting to open up with limited ice time and things like that. But tell us about Warrior Hockey. How did Warrior survive this uh, last 13, 14 weeks we've been under? Uh, I think, like everybody else, being patient uh, and waiting for ice to return, but starting to explore new ways to play off the ice and train at home, things like that have been interesting, um, especially for us, You know, finding different ways to interact with the players and the kids and even the retailers right it's yeah can't talk to them in person anymore so 
Yeah, uh, it's been uh, definitely tricky navigating the waters that we're in, but you know, it's it's good. It opens everybody's eyes up to trying something new. All right, it's June. Everybody's getting ready now yeah. for the continuation, and then for next season, what's new at Warrior Hockey in line for goaltenders? Um, so we've got our new Ritual uh, G5 series out. Um, G5 has been our stiffer board pad, uh, new cover edge technology to cut down that shooter's angle, um, right. giving the goalies a little bit of advantage there, and uh, working with our new upper bodies as well. So we have upper bodies, pants, and a new RM1 stick that's just super lightweight, uh, really responsive for the goalies that want to play the puck a little bit more. Um, so we're excited, we're excited to get it out on the ice and got some... Uh, Oh, I forgot about the mask. I think yeah. the mask has been the biggest thing at behind the mask, right? So right. Uh, the, our new goaltending mask has been phenomenal. Great reception on the uh, comfort and feel of it. Um, so really a lot to give to the goaltenders to get back on the ice. Uh, I think perfect timing for everybody to get new gear and get ready to go. Okay, you led me into two things. Number one is goaltenders playing the puck. Everybody wants to play the puck. Coaches like to have guys mm -hmm. that can handle it but not mishandle it, right? Sure. What's the key to doing that, handling it but not mishandling it? I think it's confidence. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not a goaltender myself, but having coached a number of different years with kids and trying to teach them how to get confident in getting into the corner, stopping the puck behind the net, but you have to go in with confidence and just knowing you're going to do it because any second you have a little bit of you know, maybe misstep there, here or there, and you're self-doubting yourself, then you're not, you know, sealing the boards up and uh, you whiff the puck uh, on an outlet pass. So that's everybody's worst nightmare. But yeah, just having confidence that, hey, I'm going to go out and do it and outlet pass and my forwards are going back on the attack. All right. Tell us about the mask. What makes your warrior mask different? You, said, you already talked about comfortability and, and being light and things like that. But yep. what makes it, is that the, the key to it or is there more, something more to it? I think lightweight's a big part of it. We use yep. our minimus carbon that we're using in our composite sticks right now to shape the mask. But the shell is very unique in that, you know, being not the first one to, to the game here, um, we've been able to scan everybody else's masks and find kind of that right in between shape. What's comfortable here? What's comfortable here? What's not good here? What's not good here, right? And kind of meld it right in the middle. So a lot of the kids that are coming over and trying it on are saying, you know, I, one thing feels tight, but this is right in the middle. This is great, you know? So yeah. we're kind of in the middle on the two. Um, the comfort of it, the adjustability of it. We've got a lot of European players that are currently wearing it um, and giving us great feedback, so. You know, we know with the goalie mask that uh, they like to paint them. They like them to, to have their own style. Yep. But the comfort and the protection is really key, isn't it? Yep. Uh, you got to be comfortable in it. You got to uh, make sure the padding's there, and uh, you know you're not taking the the shots to the noggin all the time, and it's uh, hurting you. So we've identified high impact zones and try to pad those accordingly. Um, our helmets are coming out white, so they're fully customizable. And uh, I know some of the painters in town here are going to have a busy summer ahead. You know, there's a big talk about the uh, the concussion protocol in, in all sports right now, and goaltenders as well. They get hit, knocked over. Yeah. Uh, tell me about the percussion, uh, the concussion protocol with these masks. Um, you know, everything's HEX certified. It goes through the drop test that everyone does. But, you know, I, again, I think when you look at concussion, you look at the jolting of the head too. So we put padding in certain areas to try and re reinforce a and just create a better cover around the head so there's no uh, gaps, I guess is the best word to say. Right. Um, when you have air gaps, whether it be in a player helmet or a goalie helmet, um, that's where that helmet starts moving independently of the head and you start running into some trouble, right? So we've also used a one-piece shell so everything is like a bike helmet. You right. know, you're absorbing energy. There's no kind of uh, gaps uh, when the uh, layers overlay or whatnot. Okay, we know that uh, they can get the Warrior products right here behind the mask, yep. but they have questions about Warrior. How do they reach Warrior Hockey? How do they follow you guys on social media? All that good stuff. Yeah, we're all over social. So DM us uh, on Instagram, Warrior Hockey, or we have Warrior Goalie too, and then on Facebook as well. Um, plenty of new videos on our new Goalie Protective, uh, all up on Warrior Hockey on YouTube. Kevin Wu, Warrior Hockey here behind the mask on another Sunday special. The uh, yeah. the Behind the mask goalie day. I just love saying that because That's goalie great. goalie talk in the middle of summer is awesome. Well, Thank you, Kevin. With goaltending, so we're a pleasure to be out here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being out.
All right, we're back. Ice Time Hockey Southwest, another Sunday special. We are here behind the mask for the goalie day. Scott Morrow is with me with CCM. Scott, it is uh, 95 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona in June. Your thoughts, first of all, on that? You know, it actually feels good. <laughs> feels good to be outside. Um, uh, just being a little bit more active, and it's nice to see the excitement. Uh, goalies are always probably the most passionate uh, position on the ice, and as you can see with today's turnout, that uh, they're pretty excited to look at some of the new gear, and uh, you know it's it's nice to talk talk goalie with them. I have a friend up in Las Vegas that did a little shoot, Mark Andre Fleury, in the in the new Axis. Tell me a little bit about the uh, the pad itself and what makes it so unique and different. Well, the access is something that uh, has evolved. I think we've got a great goalie team, um, you know, over the years, and it's the first pad that we have uh, away from the Lefebvre line, too. So we're extremely excited about it. Uh, you know, it's got a, a softer uh, uh, leg channel, but still has the rebound uh, play that uh, the goalies from the Premier really like. So. Okay, so we talked a little bit about that. Every year, things seem to evolve, right? This year, I don't think anybody expected a pandemic to take over, but how has CCM handled things for the last 13, 14 weeks that we've all been dealing with this? It's been, it's been a tough time uh, for everyone. Um, you know, we've had uh, the Quebec up there where, where yeah. our home base is, uh, was closed for almost two months as far as shipping, and, and uh, so... It's every different part of the country right now is, uh, has different times that they're set up uh, or so-called get back to hockey, back on the ice. So uh, it's been a transition just to try and figure out which accounts are open, which rings are o rinks are open, and how you maintain kind of natural business flow. When you talk about the NHL coming back, and I've asked this question to several different people, it, it's going to be different, no doubt about it. They got two um, sites, one east, one west, to, uh, to play games at. The biggest thing I think to me, and maybe with goaltenders too, is that crowd is a big thing for goaltenders. They like to either turn them on or turn them off, yeah. depending on what end of the ice you're on. Yeah. How important do you think that's going to be not having fans in the building? I think it's, it's going to be a big change. Yeah. I think after you play a couple games, uh, you know, the players are pros, and they're going to be able to turn in, uh, you know, tune out whatever they have to and, and kind of dial in for what they need to. So they're going to come to play. Um, they're going to play off of each other. Uh, it's going to be like almost training camp all over where you're playing, uh, you know, at training camps, you're playing against uh, whether uh, smaller crowds or in different arenas where you have um, kind of exhibition games. But it's, it's going to be like that, but you still have the same, same passion and play. Yeah. Okay, so we talk about the guys coming back, and we know the guys that were injured are probably very thankful that they have some time to get back on the ice. I think a lot of guys missed it and maybe have a new passion, a new fighter. Just your thoughts on returning to the ice after, you know, three-month break, four-month break. Yeah, uh, most of the teams uh, went from, you know, could have, could have been devastated to having a full healthy lineup now. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a little bit different dynamic when you come back and and uh some of the guys that may have been playing a lot might not be playing a lot but you know it's nice to see i think it'll be a refreshing for probably one of the first times in a long time where every team is on that kind of even playing field going in to what they thought they were going to have for the year right so on that extreme it's very exciting uh, for the teams that might have had some momentum that had to take a, a leave for a few months you know, it could be uh, trying to find uh, where, you know, where they left off. So it's going to be a different dynamic for sure. All right. We've seen a bunch of people rolling through here. What are they talking about with CCM? What are you showing them? What do they want to see? Tell us a little recap of CCM goalie products. Yeah. Well, we've got the new Axis lineup in, in, as far as the pads, uh, blocker catcher. Uh, we've got the new arm and body. Uh, we've got a whole new mass line. So, I mean, we have something, usually every year we have, you know, stuff come out, but this is a, a big year where you'll have the goalie mask and, and launching along with the pads, glove blocker. So there's not many years that we have, you know, new high-end uh, sticks and we've got our new goalie skates that just came out. We've got, you know, so it's a full lineup. 
top to bottom, pretty much every piece in our goalie line, uh, even down to the throat protector. So, um, but yeah, no, it's been a good uh, good turnout. It always opens at ten, and the, the first people here were here today at eight fifteen. So they're ready to go. Absolutely. Everybody's ready for hockey to get back. Scott Morrow from CCM, thanks for joining us today. Always great to see you. Always great to have you back here in the Desert Southwest. Thanks for having me, and uh, always a pleasure. Thanks. All right, we're back. Behind the mask, I've got a Kachina goaltender with me. How exciting is this? It's uh, Behind the Mask Goalie Day. Hannah Schneid Miller is with me. Hannah, tell me what it's like to finally get back out, look at goalie pads, do that good stuff. Uh, it's pretty fun looking at all the new gear and just trying to experience this fun. So the pandemic kids, you guys are playing, you got big plans, right? You're going to do all these different things, all of a sudden they're canceled. What's it like? Uh, sucks because I was <laughs> like wanting to have fun and then it just gets canceled out of nowhere. Yeah. And nationals and stuff. Tell me about Kachinas and Kachinas goaltending and what it's been like to be a part of the Kachinas organization. It's been fun and I like it. Tell me about the, the program. How does, it, how does it work? How many girls are playing? How many girls are on your team? How competitive is it? Uh, there's a lot of girls I'm surprised yeah. from it just being starting and it works pretty good uh, they do good so here behind the mask what are you looking for is there anything special you needed today uh goalie knee pads uh. <laughs> and a, maybe a chest protector when you look at all the new stuff and everybody's got their stuff on display and you can try them on and do this and that what's the thing that you like the most of the new equipment probably the sticks yeah mm -hmm. and what are you looking for in a stick what makes it different I guess just keeping them light, yeah. be able to move them and pass the puck if you need to. How excited are you to get back on the ice again and start doing some real ice time stuff? Uh, pretty <laughs> happy. <laughs> Anna Schneidmiller here at Behind the Mask as the uh, goalie day continues. Another Sunday special at Ice Time Hockey Southwest. All right, welcome back in to another Sunday special, another Behind the Mask Goalie Day. Yeah. We've been talking goalie equipment. I just got the Warrior guy, Kevin Wu, yeah. telling me about the new Warrior mask. He said they all came white for a reason. They want to be painted, yes. so why not come to the guy that does the job, Will Flores. Will, thanks for stepping in with us. First of all, I want to get your comment on this beautiful weather in Phoenix, Arizona on mid-June almost. It's better than I thought it was going to be. It was really hot a couple days ago, so this is actually enjoyable. I could live with this. All right, Randy opened up the stores. He always does for goalies, right? It's yep. goalie day. You do a great job of painting goalie masks. Tell me what you've been up to when, during the pandemic. I know there's been a lot of painting going on anyway. Um, actually, it hasn't been too bad. Oh. Um, I have been doing a couple motorcycles and stuff. I've kind of branched <laughs> out a little bit. That's kind of strange, um, considering I've been typically known as the goalie mask guy. Um, I've been working. I'm still working full time, so yeah. I've been doing that. And uh, a couple masks I've... Uh, my kid just got picked up for a junior team, so I'm picking up a couple junior masks coming up in the USBHL, and then I have the college kids coming around pretty soon, and and then obviously after tryouts, uh, all the all the uh, tryout kids will come around, so it's going to be busy. Tell us about painting goalie masks. You told me once before. It's been a little while. Let's revisit that. How how does it start and how does it finish? Just kind of a synopsis of how it goes from start to finish sure uh usually what ends up happening is that uh a player would come up to me talk to me about what they want to design whether they go with the team logo or something personal uh i get the mask sand it down prime it prep it up seal it up paint it uh put a couple of layers of heavy clear coat on it for a high impact and then set it on its way 
and then players get to use it all year and enjoy it. Is there anything you can't do? Has somebody brought you something so crazy that you said, I just can't do this? Um, there's been stuff that I turn around and go, really, do you want to do this? Um, I, I've, I just recently put a name on a mask, which I thought was a little inappropriate, but okay, yeah, I did that. Um, I'm, I'm doing an 8-bit mask now, which is extremely difficult because it's very cubic. It's Hopefully, it's going to come out really nice. Um, I'm liking the way it is doing. I was working on it this morning, but uh, it's taking up a lot more time than I thought it was. But uh, so far, I haven't come up with anything too crazy. You know, we've seen a lot of your work. A lot of our people have watched the uh, the story that you did, and they've seen the mask. And, and they all ask me when I go somewhere, I mean, did Will Flores do this mask? Um, I don't know. I don't know how many you've done. But we know that your work is, is synonymous with the desert southwest for sure. Give me some favorites, if you can, and, and don't, don't you know, to single up people, but tell me some that you really thought stood out to you or really made an impact, especially when we're going through all the things that we are as a country right now. Um, well, I d actually did one for um, a friend of, or actually a kid that used to play against my son. Um, he used to be a Bobcat, left the Bobcat organization, uh, joined the military, he's joined the Marines. His brother joined the Navy. Um, so I did a tribute mass for him with the Navy, uh, the the Eagle, Eagle Globe and uh, Anchor, Anchor Globe and Anchor Eagle Globe. Forgive me if I messed that up. And the, the Navy logo on the other side for both both of his kids. Uh, that one came out really good. Um, I always kind of like my son's mask because he kind of usually pushes me a little bit more to do a little bit further. I'm really proud of both the ASU ones and the U of A ones. Um, I also did another one for a um, another longtime goalie acquaintance. Um, which was also, he plays for the Junior Sun Devils, which is another one that I really like. Um, so there's, there's been a couple ones that I've, that I've enjoyed. Well said. Let's, uh, let's talk about his son. You've got a son moving up in the ranks, don't you? Yes, actually, he's right here. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, he just signed uh, with the Charlotte team. Uh, I'm sorry, Charleston team out of the USB PHL. Nice. So he just got his number today, and uh, I'm bringing, I uh, just bought a couple parts to redo his mask and uh, get it ready for next season. All right, let's wrap it up with what you've seen here behind the mask today and all the different equipment. It changes every year. It evolves. What are some of the things that stood out to you? Uh, actual brand stuff, the CCM stuff, that Apex stuff looks amazing. The Warriors new helmets came out, and even the Apex helmets, fantastic. Uh, Bauer is always solid with their stuff. Their, their new uh, set of pads is just ridiculously light and amazing. Um, I'm, I'm always amazed that even, you know, the newest stuff that comes out is just ridiculously light and just, if, if I could use those now, I'd be much better goalie <laughs> than I am now. But, uh, yeah, some of the stuff is just ridiculously nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm always amazed and the reps here are just fantastic. They asked all the questions for, you know, nerds like me, my son who just asked all this really ridiculous questions, you know, you're just grilling the Vaughn rep about the difference between the V8 and the V9 chest protector and really getting nerdy about that kind of stuff. Well, Flores, thanks for stepping in with us today at Behind the Mask. Always great to see you. Stay healthy, my friend, and continue the good work. You too, thanks. Thanks, have a good one. All right, we're back. Another Sunday special for Ice Time Hockey Southwest. We're here behind the mask, the uh, annual goalie day. What a great day. We've seen a lot of people, seen a lot of people moving around, buying some stuff, looking at some stuff. Always fun to get out here. Even more fun when the temperature is 95 instead of 115, which it certainly could be in June. So congratulations to everybody at Behind the Mask and all the, uh, the people that were here to... Uh, to look at product, buy product, do all that good stuff. Stay safe out there in the pandemic. And uh, we'll see you again on another Sunday special.